So I'm unmuting all of us right now. I'm officially going to go on. Um, welcome to the 2020 Regional Agreement Amendment Committee meeting, the first one of this year. It's about 310. Um, we are doing a virtual Zoom teleconference meeting. It's April 8th. This meeting is being held fully remotely in accordance with the governor of Massachusetts, March 12, 2020, order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, GL section 330A, section 20. Uh, I'm the superintendent of schools, Chef Simonak, and this is the first meeting. Uh, I will call your name out. Uh, and if you would just say present as a member of the, uh, I should say this is a subcommittee of the regional school committee. And we have members of the school committee and the town of Whitman and Hanson both represented. So when I call your name, would you just say present, please? Uh, Chris Griffin, school committee member in Whitman. Present. Chris Howard, school committee member in Hanson. Present. Justin Evans, Whitman Board of Selectmen. Present. Rick Anderson, uh, Whitman FinCom. Present. Chris George, Town of Whitman Community Member at Large. Present. Matt Dyer, Board of Selectmen, Hanson. Okay. Laura Kemet, Board of Selectmen, Hanson. Present. Bruce Young, Town of Hanson Community Member at Large. Present. So those are our voting members for this committee. Non-voting members are myself, Jeff Simonek, uh, Superintendent of Schools. George Farrow, Assistant Superintendent of Schools. Present. Frank Lineup, Town of Whitman, Town Administrator. Present. John Stanberg, Town of Hanson, Town Administrator. And Bob Hayes, School Committee Chair. Present. Okay. Uh, since this is a subcommittee of the Regional School Committee, my recommendation uh, for chair of this school uh, of this meeting would be the vice chair of the school committee, uh, Chris Scriven. Is there any opposition to Chris Scriven being the chair of this committee? Since it's a subcommittee of the school committee. Hearing none, I'd like to, excuse me. I'm sorry, Jeff, I was just asking you, just generally throwing that out there or? Uh... Well, this is a subcommittee of the school committee. So, and all our subcommittees of the school committee, we have a school committee member as the chair of that committee. Oh, I don't have um, a problem with it. I was just wondering if you were just generally throwing that concept out there. No, so it, this is this is how um, the school committee subcommittees have run. And uh, if you want to, if, I'll ask that for a motion from somebody. Uh, I'll make so that moved. Motion. Uh, that's Bruce. Okay, Bruce, second Bruce, anybody? Chris Howard will second. Thank you. Any discussion on that? No. Okay. Hearing none, uh, can I just get a vote of the committee? Just uh, raise your hand. I can see everyone. Roll well, you call. can't. Roll yeah, roll, it has to be roll, roll call. call. Yep. Okay. okay. And, and I'm sorry, Mr. Jeff, but just as a preliminary matter, are we sure that we're meeting the requirement of the of the open meeting law? Um, because the Zoom conference that um, Chris posted is not available to the public, and that is the preliminary like kind of piece of it is that you've got to allow the public not to participate, but at least to be able to like witness or hear um, what is being said. And obviously we couldn't have anticipated we would have had technical issues, but I just want to make sure that we're comfortable with proceeding. Well, we are, we are live on local cable right now. Right. But the requirement is that you have to post the meeting with the information to be able to see the meeting. So I know that you're saying cable, but the Zoom credentials also, I believe, are supposed to be posted. I'll defer to the rest of the group. I just want to bring that up as a, a, a point of, um, you know, um, clarity. Laura, if I may, the uh, the rules state that if you're not able to broadcast live or present live. You must make that recording available within 24 hours, um, and you have to file the minutes of the meeting um, the next day or as soon thereafter as practical. All right, thanks, Frank. That's helpful. I just want to make sure, Jeff, that we weren't stepping yes. into some, you know, quagmire here. Thanks, Laura. So, uh, our can I get a roll call? We're going to do a roll call for for chair um, Justin Evans. 
You're muted, Justin. Yes. <clears throat> uh, Chris Howard. Yes. Chris Griffin. Yes. Ricky Anderson. Yes. Chris George. Yes. Uh, Matt, are you on Matt Dyer? Miss Laura Kemet. Yes. And Mr. Young. Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Scriven. You are now chair, and this is your meeting. Thank you. Um, I guess we'll start with moment of silence. Pledge of allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States of America, America and to the Republic, Republic which is stands, one nation, one nation, nation one God, God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice, justice for all. Justice Thank you. For all. Nice touch mug there, Michelle. Thank you. <laughs> I just want to thank everybody for uh, attending. Um, we wanted to call this uh, meeting, get this group together um, to discuss our impasse um, as it relates to our district's budget. Um, I, uh, we, we, we convened a, a regional uh, committee a while back and uh, we decided to um, um, Hold, you know, hold off on meeting again, as as we understood the towns essentially needed to work out something. Um, so now, after a time, I'm hearing at least that uh, there hasn't been much movement. Um, so the idea is to get everybody together and, and, and see if we can get the ball rolling. Um, I does anyone have any? Um, Discussion, I, I guess, is what you would how we do this. I apologize. I'm my first meeting I've run, so. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, I'm I'm hoping that we can get some good dialogue going, and we can continue to to meet as often as needed. Um, once we get, you know iron out the kinks of the Zoom, um, it does make things a little easier um, to to get everyone together. Um, so, that being said. Um, like I was saying, I, does anyone have anything to uh, to update our, our committee on? Any kind of talks or progress or anything like that? I, Chris, if I yep. may. Yep. If this is the regional agreement committee, you can't talk about school budget. You have to stick to talking about the regional agreement committee in, in less, uh I think we're getting off topic. This isn't this committee, isn't the charge of this committee to look at the regional agreement, not the budget. Okay. Well, is there anything we can do within the agreement then that'll help us uh, there you go. get past our impasse? Chris? So I, I, I so, so I guess I would throw this out to the group um, in the spirit of trying to get us to move forward fairly quickly from this impasse. So if we look at the existing regional agreement, the language around the apportionment of operating costs, page seven, section E, subsection one, presently spells out um, the agreement methodology that I think everyone on this call is fully aware of in terms of how that works, which uh, distill it to its simplest forms is just a per pupil expenditure. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion uh, around the various assessment methodologies, uh, what I would propose for this group to consider is as a phased approach, that specific language within the agreement, um, come up with something that would be a framework to move us past this year, simply focus on that as, as this phase, use that in this budget cycle, and then after the budget cycle or concurrently, we work towards fully working through uh, the agreement itself. I know the agreement's been looked at before. I think some folks on this call were on there previously, but I think a lot's changed. I think simply just saying, let's just take the last agreement that was voted by the school committee and actually voted and then subsequently rescinded by the, the town of Hanson. I don't think it's going to work. I think there's going to be too many things that we're going to have to open back up and look up, look at. So what I would propose is kind of a phase approach with phase one simply being, uh, can we attack work through that very specific language around how we handle the costs 
And specifically, is there a way we can just get to uh, maybe a compromise where for year one, it's just a, maybe we use half the alternative methodology and half the statutory methodology that would literally get us to basically a 50-50 split. Um. Rick? Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I really don't think I can express fully how disappointed I am in the fact that the school committee has yet to present a budget uh, for this fiscal cycle. Um, we have stated publicly in the past and some of these um, meetings, the school committee budget meetings especially, that the Women Finance Committee will not support any assessment that is calculated with anything other than the statutory method. And just as a follow-up, um, in our last two meetings, we've talked about this very specifically. And I've been tasked further by the full committee to publicly state that this finance committee will not recommend any phased implementation or any other financial consideration that causes us to pay Hanson's bills. And basically that, Mr. Howard, is your proposition from how I can see. So I would say that I am emphatically opposed to any recommendation or changes to the regional agreement that would that would affect that type of a change. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, could I could I make a statement, Bruce? Yes, um, I was under the impression that um, you know, at least I was asked in order to be on this committee, uh, would you be in a position to to be able to compromise um, in any of uh, your what your positions may be or what you may have thought should be the way that the the school should be calculating the assessment. And I said, sure, surely I will. And I think that that was echoed probably best by Christine Lynch from the DESC when she said that this whole situation should be worked out uh, in, in, in anticipation of coming up with, with, a, with, a, with a method of assessment that would be acceptable to the voters of both towns, or the townspeople of both both towns. So, I mean, if you take a hardball approach and say, basically, this is going to be statutory or nothing, or basically, this is going to be a percentage of pupils method or nothing, then then I then really, if I if I had taken that position, there would be no way in the world I I would want to be on that committee because I'm I'm looking for a fair compromise. As Christine Lynch, Lynch basically said, uh, probably a couple, uh, two and a half months or three months ago now, that that both towns would be willing to uh, 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 accept. And and from, from the standpoint of Town of Hanson, sure, we'd we'd like to continue the same way that we have for the past 60 years. And I can see Whitman's position that they would like to go with the statutory method because obviously that basically favors them. Uh, this year, on a financial standpoint, to the tune of one million one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So, um, in order to get by this year, I basically agree with Chris. We should be look. We would. We should calculate basically where we would be using the statutory method. Calculate where we would be using the uh, agreement method. Take an average of the two. That works out to somewhere between five and six hundred thousand, rather than uh, a million two. That would be where I would be starting, and then I, we can work from there. That, that's basically where I would, where, where I would look to go on this. And uh, uh, may I um, speak, Mr. Scarborough? Sure, Laura. Yeah. Um, and I think that I can certainly appreciate where Mr. Anderson is coming, and I think he's been on the record, um, really. Um, consistently um, with that position. Um, but I think what I would say is he's one member of this committee. Um, and I think uh, that if the majority of the committee is willing to work on some type of compromise, and I don't know whether that ends up being what Chris has just proposed um, or not, but we've got to start someplace, um, then I think that's what I'm hoping is going to happen when we have this conversation. Um, without compromise, I don't even see why we're meeting, really. Honestly, it's sort of like, why are we, <laughs> why are we even bothering to meet? Um, so, uh, you know, uh, and, and I, I, um, I am an eternally optimistic person, so I refuse to take that position. 
Thank you, Laura. Um, so, I, oh, Chris, go ahead. Chris George. Are you on mute, I think, Chris? Yeah. Um, the, so I understand, I think, where everybody's coming from. The, the one thing I would mention, I think we need to be very careful about how we structure any compromise, assuming we can reach a compromise. So part of the rules here are that local assessments cannot go down, particularly due to a change in method. And so if we build a compromise into Whitman's assessment, that could quite frankly hurt both towns in future years where we'd be held to a budget that at least meets that assessment maybe even more. So we should be thinking about, right? So if we were to just take 600,000 and add that to Whitman's assessment, then the following year, not only would Whitman have to meet that, the, you know, the, the budget would have to be reflective of that and could, could, could force us into a higher situation. So we, we should also be thinking about creative ways to do this. Are there items that we could pull out um, as capital that, that maybe Whitman could fund? Um, things, things of that nature. So you, you got to be care. You got to be careful about what you do here from an assessment perspective. I'm Thanks, not, Chris. I'm not following that at all. Justin, I, I think we should lay out what the the actual objectives are for this committee before we get too far into this conversation. Um, if our goal is to amend the regional agreement to structure a compromise, that's not going to get done for this fiscal year. It may not get done for next fiscal year. Even if we had an agreement to send to Desi tomorrow. They've got a lot going on right now. They're probably not going to approve something in the next two months. Um, so any any uh, agreement that that we can come to for this budget cycle is going to have to exist within the current agreement and the rules of, of Chapter 70 right now. As I understand it, Justin, uh, if we were to come out of this committee with um, a compromise, um, it would then go back to the school committee to be voted on. Um, and then it would be um, sent to DESE for preliminary approval, which would enable us to go to the town meeting with it uh, and let the voters vote on it. I, I could be wrong, but that's my understanding. Okay, but so to Justin's point though, um, Chairman um, Scriven, um, what is our objective? What is our stated objective for this? Just to try to help us keep on track because there are a lot of different moving parts here. You know, we've got the budget, we've got the assessment methodology, we've got the regional agreement and they all kind of, they are definitely um, inextricably linked, but we're gonna have to try to de-link them for the purposes of a transparency, B actually getting something done, and C sticking with the open meeting law um, regulations, which state we've got to stick with our intent, you know, our purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I I, I get it. Um, uh, to just to be honest, um, as I mentioned before, um, my objective was to get past our impasse, right? Um, and however we need to do that uh, legally. Um, and, I, and to Bob's point earlier, I know we need to, uh, you know, narrow the focus of this meeting, um, but that's that's my objective. So however we can accomplish that, um, you know, that's what I'd like to do. You know, I, I, and I mentioned earlier how we, uh, you know, we can meet again uh, um, soon and, and, and we can meet as often as we need to. So if, if we need to circle back and, and figure out how we want to come at this, so be it. I'm, I'm all for it. I'll meet as often as we as we need to. Um, but um, yeah, I guess my my objective was to try to get everybody together and, and get some movement on on our impasse. Rick, I think I saw you with your hand up. Yes, uh, just a follow up and just a clarification on your outline. Um, you specifically said that you know what our objective for our timeline would be is to this committee to somehow come to some type of an agreement or a compromise. And then for that to be then sent to the school committee for a vote, subsequently to the state, and then, as you said, to each member town for ratification of the amendment. Is that correct? That's how I understand it, yes. So, uh, again, I, I, I really liken this uh, whole exercise to an exercise in futility if, in fact, one town is most likely not going to accept uh, any type of a compromise uh, of a recommendation that includes its town departments to supplement their budgets with budgets of a member town. 
that's 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 all. And 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 just to follow up about uh, just to follow up on the um, using a number of years to average out what could be some type of a compromise, I would suggest that we go back a number of years and calculate for the last six years the four point two million dollars that women has overpaid in this process and use that for the average if you're looking to average out uh, some type of a compromise. In my estimation, the compromise has already taken place and we're still on the losing side, the taxpayers of Whitman, that is. And that again, from the financial aspects of the finance committee is where my position is. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Mr. Thank you. Uh, Mr. 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 Chairman? Yes, Bruce. Can, can somebody explain to me what, what retroactive overpay is? Because if, 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 we, if, we're, if we're hearing things like that that people actually believe, then we're, we're really not going to get anywhere here. So somebody please explain to me what retroactive overpay is. Rick, you want to take that? Yeah, sure. I, I, that wasn't the term that I used. That wasn't the term that I used. I specifically said that the town of Whitman, because it has not been using the statutory method in, in the school committee, using this calculation of the statutory method in the last four years or six years or however many years, there is a, a very factual document that we could provide to the members of the committee that shows specifically how much the town of Whitman overpaid by not using the statutory method in calculating the assessment for the Whitman Hanson Regional School Budget. All right, I'd so, be happy to provide that document to the committee. Right. So as I understand it, we, you know, it's the 300 pound grill in the room. Um, the fact that uh, the state um, came out with initiative and recommendations, um, and for whatever reason, um, we we didn't we weren't aware of that, and and subsequently didn't didn't follow it. Um, but we had an existing agreement that we, um, you know, abided by. Um, exactly. So th that's the, you know all these play into the, the conundrum we're in right now, um, and I, I I'm coming at this from. Uh, what I, I consider myself to be a, a, a member of an extended community. Um, it's Whitman Hanson Regional High School. It brings both towns together. There's a lot of benefits involved from regionalizing um, financially and otherwise. Um, and and I, I hope that we can remember that and keep that in, in perspective and um, continue to be good partners and uh, figure out a way to get through this. That's, that's, that's how I'm coming at this, Rick. Yeah, so I, I fully concur with the way you say that. And I don't want to send the wrong impression. I certainly understand the challenges that the town of Hanson is facing. We obviously have been in the same position ourselves. Just, you know, I, I don't want to get too far off topic, but Whitman has some significant financial challenges and burdens that lie on the near horizon. We need to, you know, fund uh, a new middle school or major renovations to an existing school. We have a DPW uh, that its conditions have been accurately described as hazardous. So there are definitely financial problems in both towns. And I fully support the fact that we are a two member regional um, school district and um, we are definitely partners. And I, I obviously I empathize with the situation that the town of Hanson finds itself in. Mr. Yep. Scriven, if I can add, yeah. add in. So I, I see us just trying to look at, at our, the, the purpose of this committee is to, to look at our objectives. And I think Mr. Evans said it, what's the objective of this? And I see this as a, as a couple, couple of prongs. We definitely have a financial issue right on the desk of the school committee right now. I think the financial piece of our regional agreement is something we have to look hard and fast at if, if we can modify if we can make some compromise, if if that's a big if. The second piece is the entire regional agreement that 91 was was looked at in 2017 and was put to vote in the at the school committee level, at the Hanson level, and at the Whitman level. And right now we don't have a, an agreement. So there there are two facets of this 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 committee. I think looking at the first, I think the idea is to try to come up with some financial compromise if if we can. If we can't. I'm not sure, but this whole, this team here is really charged at fixing or amending or putting forth a new regional agreement, hopefully in FY for fiscal 21 moving forward. 
So the committee itself is built to look at the entirety of the regional agreement. And I think our objective would be, you know, piece by piece, the financial piece for me right now and for Mr. Farrell and for the school committee is to get a budget out to the towns to vote. Um, depending right now, the school committee has voted the statutory method in. That's the method that I proposed in our budget. And with this, I know we've been talking it, it, it publicly and I know members of our community have met informally to see if there is any compromise on both sides of the table because we know it is a financial impact to the town of Hanson to the tune of one point something million dollars and that would be a struggle. My, my charge for this committee is to make sure we put the best regional agreement forth for our kids uh, because those are the people that are impacted right now and the, the burden right now that I think is facing all of us is the fact that we have a financial uncertainty in our nation, in our state, and in our communities right now, outside the fact that we don't have a budget moving forward um, for the towns to vote on. So I think we look at it as our objective is, is to check, to look at the entire regional agreement. But I think our first task, as Mr. Scriven has said it, and I know that he's passionate about it, is seeing how we can get a budget to the school committee that we can put forth to the both towns for vote in June. So I, I see those as our objectives. There's a, a big objective and then narrowing down the little objectives. Thank yeah, you, Jeff. Could I, Chris? Could I maybe make a suggestion? I have, I have one, or, or Chris, I have, I have one thought and, and, and maybe a little bit that's to kind of start at the end and work our way backwards, right? So, I mean, from my perspective, based on what can happen in either town, based on what can happen in town meeting, the, the end result of this, and, and, and based on the way it's calculated, um, in terms of uh, per pupil costs, um, students in, in different grade levels, et cetera. To me, the end of this is the agreement should reflect the statutory method with the amounts above and beyond um, the foundation budget split by per pupil ratio. Um, essentially what we're in today by, by default. To me, if that's the end point, we can work our way backwards as to how we get there. Um, I think that was the language that was actually suggested by Desi the last time around. Um, it, 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 to me, would, would make sense as, as maybe a, a starting point. So, so I, I, I <coughs> so, um, Chris Howard. There's so many Chris's on this call. We've got to come up with, <laughs> got to kind of come up with nicknames or something. Um, I'm sorry, um, Chris George. Um, so what? Uh, so what I think I'm hearing you say is, as a preliminary matter, to reach an agreement that the end game is that we acknowledge that because of a variety of factors, that statutory is ultimately where the agreement will land and then back into where we are now. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I understood where you were going, where you were going with that. Chris Howard. So uh, I like what Chris George just said, and I would agree that that's where this is going to end up. And I think, I think he was saying the same thing. I think that's um, what the state, when they went and talked to us ultimately said as well. Um, when I do look at that agreement, right, the, that language read to you does kind of put us at an impasse because the language in the agreement presently says we're using an agreement methodology that I think what, I'm, what is and there needs to be some sort of compromise because we're not using the full agreement methodology. We're not using the per people expenditure. So to me, it speaks to the fact we need to address that. The other thing I think um, to Mr. Anderson that I would point out, and, and I certainly appreciate uh, the position and, 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 and thoughts that, that the citizens of Whitman have, the entire, both towns have benefited, benefited financially. I think most importantly, as Chris Scriven pointed out, they've, they've, they've benefited um, in coming together as a community first and foremost. But from a strict economic standpoint, both towns have benefited financially by being a region over that those decades that we've been regionalized. And so I think, again, and I mean this with respect, from the perspective, the entire agreement, we came together based upon a certain economic foundation that we're now changing. 
And so to Chris George's point, to me, just one person can see the shift. I'm just trying to come up with a pragmatic way so what this is, that we can address that over a little bit of time, a little bit of time. Um, because I think that to me that, you know, if, if we're just simply going to say the state changed it, we can do it fine. But man, that's, that, that was the basis for the town of Hampton to enter into a region. And we're, so we're now kind of causing us to rethink that whole approach in terms of does the region make sense? And, and I just, to me, I don't want to go there. I don't think it's what's best for the town. I don't think it's what's best economically. Um, so I kind of really like where Chris George has taken us in terms of that's the end state, but what are the steps that we can maybe take as a group to get there? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Bruce. I want to echo the sentiments of, uh, of uh, Chris Howard and, uh, and and basically take you back to like 1991, 1992, when when this whole thing was being hashed over and whether we should go pre-K through uh, pre-K pre-K through eight and add that to the uh, add that to the existing uh, regional school, which at that time, which was nine through twelve. And um, is there anybody really there that really believes that if if part of the stumbling, if there was a stumbling block back then, and Whitman was saying, well, you know, we, we'd like to go into this full regionalization with you, but um, here's the catch. We're, we're basically looking for t for a 10 or 12% surcharge and what, what you would normally pay using the percentage of pupil method. Uh, would would anybody from, from Hanson have passed that at the town meeting and gone pre-K through 12? Because that's what about it amounts to. This one point, this one point two million dollars that's being thrust upon Hanson and one. Bruce, year. what is what what does that mean? So, so listen, I don't want to get into to, to the methodology, right? But when you when you calculate the foundation budget for both towns, it comes out to eleven thousand one hundred and fifteen dollars per pupil for both towns, and that takes into account where those pupils go to school, what grade they're in, whether they're on IEPs or not, et cetera, Right? The only thing that statutory is doing is taking into account where that chapter 78 is supposed to go. There's no surcharge. In fact, if you look at the statutory method, it is a strict 60-40 split between the two towns. The only piece that's not that split is where the aid's directed to go. So let's be careful about language. Whatever we do for a compromise, if we choose to come up with a compromise, we'll need to pass both town meetings, including Whitman's. And if there isn't an acknowledgement that over the past four or five years, aid has moved from one area to another, if there isn't an acknowledgement that this is a 60-40 split under statutory, it's not going to pass either town. Maybe you can explain line. that. Thanks, Maybe Chris. Can... Hey, if I could you please... interrupt, Bruce, um, I'm just going to ask he, if we could just to, abide by um, explain, raising... explain hey, Bruce? that whole thing with the aid. He has I don't to have explain Bruce's it to people. So. Anybody get that? I just want to remind everybody to, to uh, raise your hand to be acknowledged, um, just so we can keep an, an order to this. Okay. I give Bruce a chance to respond. I, I just want him to explain that whole the whole thing where it comes down to the to the state aid or where the state aid is supposed to go, because that is a stumbling block with a lot of people. So I, I think he really needs to explain that what what the breakdown of the state aid. Because as you know, when the Chapter 70 comes out, it's not broken down by Whitman and Hanson. It's broken down into one lump sum of, and this year it's $24,886,620 uh, going to the regional uh, Whitman Hanson Regional High School. And it's that way for every single, every single district in the, in the state. It's not broken down by any, any, to any one town. So I, I think he needs to explain that because he's saying that every time. And this is this is supposed to justify what's going on right now. So, Bruce, let me so respond. Really, if I'm not, yeah, if Chris, I'm not mistaken. Chris, Chris, if you could, please, just raise your hand. I'll acknowledge just for a full formality's sake. Thank you. Go ahead, Chris. So if I'm not mistaken, I think there are people on this call who sat in the meeting. I was not there with with Mars and, and, and I don't know if Desi was there. But my understanding is in that meeting, they acknowledged that Chapter 78 is calculated by town, regardless of how the check is paid. And? It's calculated by town. So you're, 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 so you're, 
the statutory takes into account that the chapter 78 stays with the town that's supposed to stay with. Chris Howard, did you have something? Please. So I think we, so I'm just I'm just going to throw out there we we can we can we can certainly do these circles and we've done them. I don't have any disrespect to Chris's comment or Bruce's comment. I hope you guys will agree with me. There's we can have a lot of conversations about that and what Desi said and who said what. Um, but I'm hoping maybe we can go back to where we were just a couple of minutes ago of what does the group think about in terms of if we acknowledge that maybe the end state is to get to a statutory methodology. Is there perhaps a, a, a intermediary step we could take using the agreement this year um, as the means to kind of take that first step? And then, and we still subsequently will need to re. I mean, I, you all got the you all got the agreement in your packet. We got schools in there that are no longer in the district. We have schools that are missing. There's a lot of things that need to be updated. I again am hoping we can do that in phase two. Um, but my question, really, to the folks on this committee is. Do we think we can get some middle ground to get us to, to step one? I think that- Go ahead, Laura. Um, yes, I'm sorry, um, Chris. Um, I, th I think what you're asking is a fundamentally good question, Mr. Howard, um, which is, you know, I, I would really hope for the sake of trying to move forward that we are able to acknowledge that, um, that the state has moved in the direction of statutory, that in the absence of us getting a regional agreement, a revised or amended a regional agreement in place, that more than likely we're going to end up at a uh, position where we're gonna end up at super town meeting and we all know where we go. And I just personally, I think we've all, at least those of us on the phone, um, have discussed this ad nauseum. I think we know where one another stand um, historically, um, you know, with certain people from Whitman feeling as though Whitman is paid too much. And, and, and I can certainly appreciate your perspective on that. Um, but again, I don't think that it was anything that was intentionally done by Hanson to Whitman. Um, and what we're here to talk about is the regional agreement and a path forward. And so I do think that as a fundamental matter to circle back to Mr. George's original point, I think we've got to agree. Is our, Can at least the majority of the people on the phone, at least as a preliminary matter, agree that at some point that regional agreement is going to end in a statutory method. Again, uh, to your point, Mr. George, um, you'd still have the per pupil, um, you know, split for everything other than the, other than the uh, chapter 70 money. Um, so I, you know, can't, I don't know what that looks like, but I feel like we need to set some kind of a baseline of, of what we're trying to head towards and, you know, I know, like, for instance, like Mr. Anderson would want it statutory now and statutory forever. And so we kind of know where he stands. And um, and so we kind of know, you know, also maybe where like um, Mr. Young stands, which is that, you know, we should have maybe a hybrid method or we should be doing, you know, per pupil, um, you know, uh, you know, as an evergreen matter. So I just, I don't know if we need a motion or what that looks like, or if you just do a round robin, um, Mr. Scriven, and just generally get people to say whether they agree with that, because I just don't know how we move forward without circling the strain over and over and over again, and hearing the same things over and over and over again, which is not going to be a productive use of any of our time. I agree. Thank you, Laura. Um, so yeah, I, I we would like to make a motion to acknowledge that, I guess. Is, is that what we're looking to do? I, I will I make a motion. Go person what's, by the, person. what's the motion? I will make a motion to ha to go around and at least as a preliminary matter, get acknowledgement that uh, the, the regional agreement committee will be talking about a path forward that ultimately will lead to the statutory method um, with a some some method of compromise yet to be determined, um, you know, prior to moving to that. And I'm not talking about time frames or what that method is or anything of that sort. We're not talking about how the sausage is made because I don't know how the sausage is going to be made. But we're just talking about as a preliminary matter that that we're acknowledging that 
not necessarily that we like it, um, but that that may be the way that uh, we need to move forward given the way that the deck is staffed. <clears throat> a second. Well, I'll, uh, Justin, go ahead. I'll, I'll second that in, in, in uh, you know, effort of a good faith argument moving forward. Um, you know, I, Who's that? Who is that? Oh, Justin. Uh, Justin. I think we've, we've all acknowledged that, that for long-term sustainability, um, statutory is going to have to be the method. Otherwise, any year, any town meeting <laughs> can force us this way. Or um, what may happen this year is, is we don't have time for town meeting to meet and approve a budget. So we were forced to a statutory method. I'm sorry, Justin, could you repeat that last part? Uh, in, in the event that we don't set a budget this year or that the school committee doesn't assess the towns, right. we will be in statutory method. Right, right. And and Jeff Simonek, um, yes. could you speak to the um, potential ramifications of, of, of not coming to a compromise and, and, and what, what might happen? So just, just for formalities, Chris, you have a motion and a second. You open it up for discussion. I'd be very oh. happy to... To, yeah, to okay. I'll open it for discussion. Thank okay. you. I just want I just want to keep formal here that. too. Yep. And then and then once we get past that discussion, uh, make sure you do a roll call because I always forget that now that we're virtual too. Okay. Um, so if we go to one twelfth, it'll really depend upon the commissioner. And we've heard different things coming out of Desi uh, from our superintendents list serve from our regional agreement uh, meetings that we've had with uh, with the with the. Um, finance people from Desi. Uh, the commissioner is looking at a 2020 budget, but I also know that could be a 2020 budget, a, a 112 2020 budget for both the communities right now. Uh, but the commissioner can have some leeway uh, in what he feels the towns might need. So if I look at July 1 at a 2020, strictly by the numbers, uh, we'd be looking at, at close to 35 layoffs of people but we have to we have to look at uh, unemployment, and that would be about 48 positions district wide. They could be teaching positions, they could be administrative positions, they could be paraprofessional secretary positions. But because we have to cover unemployment for those 35, we have to go with a higher number. So uh, an FY20 budget would it, it's just no movement. It's the same budget we had this year. And that FY20 budget would also be calculated under statutory. And I would, I do not know what the assessment off the top of my head right now, what that would mean for both communities, because the FY20 budget would be recalculated using the statutory method. And anything the commissioner gives us going forward for an FY21 budget, if he increases that, would be using the statutory method. Thank you, Jeff. Anyone and, else have anything for discussion? Laura? Um, yep. And, and I had seen in the chat box that um, Jeff had mentioned maybe we should invite Mars to join us. And I think that's a fantastic idea, Chris, because I think what's important is um, we've all been privy to different conversations. You know, the school committees had some conversations. There's been the selectmen have had some, you know, various groups of constituents. FinCom have had others and all of that. And I think maybe um, just as a fundamental matter, trying to get everybody up to speed on what Mars is saying is the way things operate as just sort of ground rules, I think would be kind of critical to helping everybody reach an agreement because if we all understand the same set of facts, if we're all hearing the same set of facts being presented by a third uninterested party that's telling us this is the way it works, this is what we've seen with other regional schools, this is what we're suggesting, I think that might help us um, just to all hear that together. I agree. And that's been suggested um, by others in the past too, Laura. So um, yeah, I mean, I think that's a, a, a good idea. Um, and we can certainly invite them uh, when we um, schedule our next meeting. Um, oh. I saw uh, Jeff's hand. Yeah, I was just going to say, as far as that, I think time is, is a resource for us right now. And I can reach out if the committee charges me forward. I can email Mars today and have them probably at our next meeting virtually. I think they're in the same boat we are. They're working hard with the state. There's there's quite a few regional school districts right now struggling. Uh, if we go to, a, if, if, if the state allows regionals to go to a 112 budget because of just town meetings not being able to happen, Mars is, is thin, but I think we can absolutely invite them in 
and they, they're familiar with us. And Laura, I think they were helpful for when, when they sat around the table yeah. with us. I think they can bring a, a different, uh, like you said, a third party who's not vested in us directly and give us some guidance. Thanks, Jeff. Rick? Um, yes, um, just uh, since we're talking about um, moving to, you know, the question on the table here is um, about the position of compromise. I think it would be beneficial uh, if perhaps um, Selectman Kemet, maybe you could give a summary of the discussions that have taken place to date, um, a summary of the meetings that have taken for the, the members of this committee who were not afforded the opportunity to participate. Uh, well, I mean, I feel a little weird being the one to speak to it, but I, I guess if you want to make me the spokesperson, I mean, Justin is on the phone. I think he could just as easily um, speak to it. But um, our primary focus um, in most of our meetings was about what the audit was going to be um, on the school, the audit that we've both uh, co-funded. So that was, I would say, probably 95% of what we talked about. Um, the other 5% was really talking about um, what what could we each, if statutory, if the school committee continued down what had been voted as the statutory method for funding um, the budget, um, then what what could we do in the way of a compromise? Um, and, and was Whitman able to potentially offer something up? And um, I don't know that any votes had ever been taken by the um, Whitman Board of Selectmen, so I definitely don't want to um, overstate, you know, the commitment, but there was definitely a conversation uh, that, which I mentioned at, I think, not our last selectman's meeting, but the meeting prior to that, um, where it had been suggested that perhaps a line item could be plucked out of the school budget. And we know that Bridgewater and Rainham have done uh, something similar and other regional school districts have as well. It, not we don't have complete transparency on exactly how it was structured. But uh, for instance, in this case, uh, it was suggested that perhaps Whitman could pay for uh, curriculum, uh, which was somewhere in the vicinity of 400 some odd thousand. Again, does it solve the problem? Does it, um, you know, does it uh, completely uh, mitigate, you know, the additional cost to Hanson for going to statutory versus going to, um, you know, the per pupil? No, but the thought process was, is there some way to try to preserve that partnership and uh, an olive branch, a, a sort of like a, okay, we know that you're going to statutory and that that's going to impose some hardships and in consideration for that, we're willing to do X. And I, again, um, Rick, I really don't know where uh, the, the Whitman Board of Selectmen are on that. I mean, maybe Justin could answer that question, but that was what was discussed. That was really what was put on the table. Thank you. Justin? Oh, Mr. Ch Mr. Sure, I'll, Chairman? I'll, uh, I'll, I'll weigh in on that. Um, I th Ms. Kemet characterized it accurately. I, I think the only other hang up that the Whitman Board of Selectmen was hoping for was um, that Hanson would meet some minimum level of funding before we begin uh, looking for opportunities to relieve individual items. Uh, that was one of the reasons why the both boards of Selectmen pushed so hard for a school budget to be voted so we would know what items could move to one town or the other. Um, thanks yep. Justin um, all right if there's any if there's no other further discussion I'd like to oh, yeah, Mr. Chan, oh, go ahead Bruce yeah I I'm, I'm not I'm not really to I'm not really ready to vote on this and, I, and, and I'm not really ready to vote for for a very valid reason because <laughs> you really you really don't know where you're going to stand in either fiscal 2021 or fiscal 2022, for that matter, and the whole effect that this whole coronavirus shutdown has on the economy, and and all of the people have been thrown out of work, and the state saying that uh, uh, you know all uh, all all bets are off on what your chapter 70 is going to be, and the state revenues are tanking. And keep in mind, as the state revenues tank, and that, and your twenty-five million, and your twenty-five million dollars in, ch in Chapter Seventy is affected adversely. That's going to have an adverse effect on the assessment that comes back to the two that, that comes back to the two towns. 
And with Hansen already looking at a at a million one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, if we go to statutory, that's going to be even worse. So how in how in the world can I say at this point that I think that the town of Hansen should um, should just go, should just go to the statutory rather than looking at a at a at a fair compromise be, between both methods? If I don't even know what the the whole financial situation in the state in Chapter seventy and the school budget looks like. I mean, I can't, I can't possibly make that decision at this point. Thanks, Bruce. So, Laura? Um, yep, uh, fair enough, Mr. Young. I hear what you're saying. And uh, there's, to say that there's economic uncertainty would be the um, understatement of the day. Um, I'm wondering, Chris, um, I'm, we don't necessarily have to, I know we've got a, a motion and a second on the table, but um, I'm more than willing to walk back that motion. Um, and if we think that we can queue up Mars um, for the next, you know, next um, meeting. And then I think, you know, once we've laid that preliminary foundation, I think people would have a clearer idea of, um, you know, the Mars position and sort of um, where, what their perspective is. And I think it would inform maybe some of the rest of our discussion. Go ahead, Bob. Okay. Um, I guess I'm slightly confused and I'll go back to my original statement. This committee charge is to talk about coming up with a regional agreement, not coming up with a school budget. That's the school committee's charge. The statutory method is in play already and has been voted. Now, the question was, can we ease into this? And hopefully some people were saying we could do this. Now, is Mars going to come and talk to this committee as an amendment trying to straighten out a regional agreement? Or is Mars going to come to the school committee and try to tell us how to set a budget? Uh, these are two separate things. I That's thought they I'm would saying. be talk I thought they'd be talking to us about the regional agreement. I and That's and what, what they and what, what they've asking. yeah right. and what they've seen other districts do and and why they've seen other districts do it. Ba basically what they said at the meeting that was held up at the high school um with, I don't know. Um, yes, I'm with sorry, us. Laura. Yeah. With uh, I can't recall her name now, Christine Lynch. Right. right. No, no it wasn't saying? Christine. No, it, it wasn't was, Christine. It was, it was Michelle so, from Mars. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Sorry. Um, so we, we do have a, a, a motion. Um, uh, we could take a vote or you, you could rescind, I guess, Laura. Um, yeah, I'll withdraw my motion pending, um, and, but I would like to have it taken up at the next meeting. Um, and and I, I hope that um, Jeff is able to, um, you know, and I, I know it's tricky because they're probably all working remotely and getting pulled in a million different directions, but um, I'm, I'm hopeful that they'll make themselves available um, to us. And, and and I think once they sit down and, and lay it out the way that they laid it out for us previously, um, I, I personally had a lot of light bulbs go off um, and I think maybe other people would too. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um I, th I think that's an excellent idea that Laura has, because I have some questions for Mars, too, on uh, some of the other questions that have come up uh, that other members of this committee have also uh, um, uh, extolled uh, in, in, uh, in previous discussion. Um, and I, I have some questions I'd, I'd like to uh, uh, relieve myself of with the, uh, with the Mars people as well before we, uh, we, before we progress on this any further. Okay, Bruce, thank you. Um, so given that, I, I, I guess uh, we'll have Jeff contact Mars um, and we'll uh, pick a, a, a date uh, and reschedule uh, schedule another meeting. Um, sorry, go yes, ahead, George. George. I was just going to make a suggestion. If there are questions out there for Mars in the event that they can't join our next meeting, perhaps those could be submitted to Jeff ahead of time yes. um, so that he can communicate those. Thanks, I Chris. think even if they can meet with us, it might be helpful yeah. to get those questions in advance. I would appreciate that. If anybody, Bruce, you just said you had multiple questions. I think instead yeah. of just asking them, send me those questions. <laughs> I'll forward I'll forward all correspondence to them, <coughs> excuse me, and to this committee so that you guys know what everybody's questions are ahead of time uh, for that next meeting. As soon as I we hang up here, I will email them and see what uh, what availability they have. And I assume this committee can kind of scramble 
Uh, most of us are working remotely from home. Is this a good, is three o'clock a good time uh, if I can get them on board? I know they're working remotely. Yes, Justin? So, uh, at four o'clock would be better for me. I'm still <laughs> working in the field. I'm a public utilities engineer. That doesn't stop. Yikes. I, I, think, uh, Ms, I think Mr. Dyer also had some, um, uh, you know, is, is working as well. I mean, a lot, of, most of us are working, yes. but I think, you know, he, it, three o'clock would present issues for him. I don't know if he even was able to join us today. Okay. So what I'm hearing before, not to take anything from you, Chris, what I'm hearing is I will contact Mars. People will send me a list of questions as they come up. I will present them to Mars and I'll also share all those questions with this committee. So an understanding of what other people are asking um, so that you're well-versed in, in before our next session, which I would hope to be early next week or, or middle of next week. Perfect. Rick? If there's no further business, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay, we're going to take a roll call vote. I'm sorry, Jeff? No, I was just going to say Michelle said who joined. Bob left. Oh, okay. Michelle, Bob left. Nobody joined. All right. that, I need to know that. Okay, Bob left. Yes. Thank you. All set. Yep. So we'll take a roll call vote to adjourn. I'll just start with Justin. Yep. Uh, yes. Chris Howard? Yes. Uh, Rick? Yes. Chris George? Yes. Bruce Young? Yes. Laura? Yes. Have I left anybody out, Jeff? Yourself. Yourself. Oh, yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we will adjourn. Um, I'd just like to thank everyone. Um, thank you. For participating in this. Um, Appreciate it. It's crucial um, for, for us as a district, um, and it's very much appreciated. I hope everyone stays uh, healthy uh, and we'll um, look to hear from Jeff as, as to when we can um, have our next meeting. Michelle? Is something? the next meeting next Wednesday at four o'clock? We, we have time? not set a date. Okay. Okay. All right. All Thank right. you. Stay Thank safe. Thank you all. I appreciate it very much. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you.